her feet land outside of the white line. Not the way Carly Patterson wanted to start this. How easy is it for us sometimes to let a setback become the fuel for us to just stop working? Now the margin for error on the beam is so tiny. Setbacks are opportunities for us to create strength where there wasn't that strength before. Round off backflip, double Arabia. Oh. oh, now she's really in contention after that, surely. If success is being pursued or defined from a place of fear, you won't ever achieve it. Only one American has ever won the all around title. And if you're letting others define your success, you won't receive it. One last big test. Success has to come from a place of freedom. She passes it with flying colors. That is success alone to an entirely changed life. That's the photo you'll see on the front page tomorrow. And now we know this was Carly Patterson's destiny. You dream about it all your life and all your career, and you never know if it's going to happen. Congratulations, Carly. I really don't think it's hit me yet, though. <laughs> <laughs> now we have this wonderful, new, young, exciting star that is rising. And that star is Carly Patterson. Uh, you're the first American to win the gold. It really helps the sport as you're Right, would you call it a resurgence? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> to be able to achieve my dreams and represent and honor my country like that, by any means, it's the definition of success, right? But guess what? I was only 16 years old. At that point, my question became, well, who is Carly without gymnastics? Success for me today, it's not about being the best at what you do. It's about being the best you at whatever you do. Thank you. I'm Carly Patterson, 2004. Olympic all-around champion. I am super excited to be here with you guys tonight, and I want to talk to you guys about success and what it takes to win. Today, I want to share with you guys three points that I've learned kind of along my journey that have really helped me. Hard work never disappears. And I feel like a lot of times in the gym, I was always like, gosh, I feel like I am working hard. I feel like I am putting in the time and the effort. When is my hard work going to show up and pay off, right? And I think for a lot of us, it's so easy to focus on the outcome and that end goal instead of the effort and the hard work itself. One of those times where I really had to focus on my hard work to pay off, have that patience, was actually learning this beam dismount. A round off, back handspring, and at this point I'm at the edge of the beam, and I jump up in the air and do a half turn and two front flips, then land. Yes way. <laughs> This skill is something that my coach and I came up with. Nobody in the world had ever done it before, and it took me months and months and months of hard work and dedication and doing the little things that I didn't always want to do to be able to get that skill. And today, it's actually one of the hardest skills that you can do in our sport, and it's called the Patterson. So it's actually named after me, which is pretty cool, and it's in the code of points for gymnastics forever. Success requires resilience. In life, we are all going to have setbacks at times. We were about six weeks away from world championships, which is a really, really big competition. I've been training so hard, and my elbow started hurting. So I went to the doctor, found out that it was fractured, and I needed six weeks off. And how easy is it for us sometimes to let a setback become the fuel for us to just stop working? It's like we're just waiting for that moment where we can sit back and go, you know what, I'm just going to let this take care of itself. Setbacks are opportunities for us to create strength where there wasn't that strength before. Luckily, I was able to come back stronger than ever after that elbow surgery. I, w I made the Olympic team, and like I said, I was 16 years old, and we were traveling to Greece, and we were coming up to this important night of individual all around. This night that I had dreamed of since I was a little girl. I wanted to win gold so bad. The stage is set, the lights are on, and vault is up first. So I do a really good vault, but we have these two white lines that are on the landing mat, and you're supposed to land inside them. Well, I landed with both feet right outside them, and they killed me on my score. 
I knew that at that point, I was going to have to dig deep and do the best bars, beam, and floor routine I had ever done in my life if I wanted a chance at that gold. I was always taught to never take a mistake or a fall into the next event or the next competition, to always look at that next thing as a fresh start. It's not over till the last landing. That's easier said than done, though, right? How many times do we let a bad past experience maybe tarnish a future one? I had no choice but to look at these next three events as a fresh start. So I go to bars. I do an awesome bar routine. I stick my landing. Gives me some confidence going into Beam. And Beam was my best event, my favorite event, and it was my opportunity to nail the Patterson. And to be able to stick that dismount and do that kind of a routine when it mattered most and not let the, the fear and the pressure get to me was one of my favorite moments of that night, and I'll cherish that as much as winning the gold. Because like I said, I didn't let that pressure and that fear get to me. Success must come from a place of freedom, not fear. So before the Olympics, I wasn't, you know, the popular kid in school. People didn't know my name or know who I was. But after I got back from the Olympics, Everybody knew my name. Everybody knew who I was. And I got recognized everywhere I went. But as quick as that fame came, that's exactly how fast it went away. And my life was really changing after that because a couple years had gone by and I had to retire due to a back injury. My entire identity, my entire life wrapped up in this sport. At that point, my question became, well, who is Carly without gymnastics? So I felt really lost, really empty, and kind of like I didn't have a purpose for a while. What did I decide that I wanted that new path to be? I wanted to try and be the next Taylor Swift and win a Grammy. I mean, why not, right? And I'm doing all those things I'm telling you guys about tonight. I'm working hard. I'm being resilient. I'm not letting the nose get me down. That should be all it takes, right? But how many of you guys have my album? And as I'm in the middle of doing this and, and trying to make it big, I realize what that third point that I'm talking to you guys about right now is. If success is being pursued or defined from a place of fear, you won't ever achieve it. And if you're letting others define your success, you won't receive it. Success must come from a place of freedom. It's not about being the best at what you do. It's about being the best you at whatever you do. In life, we are all going to have setbacks at times. And it's not going to be easy, but there's no other option. You're here right now. You don't know if you're ever going to get this shot again. And this is your moment.